morning everyone it's rachel here and we are doing down the garden path roxy's journal of stitchery so first of all i'm going to just update you with what i've done um i did a few little leaves in here i might just zoom you in for this bit and then we can zoom back out um, i finished off my fence i went around my gate i haven't put my um initials on there yet not my initials but an, the number i wanted to put on um i did do a few little leaves down there but they they kind of blend in i've started doing this up here and there's going to be more i've added a few little flowers there that i still have to put their little centers on and there's might be still more happening in here so this is what i mean you can come back and work into it you don't have to finish everything um every two weeks so our next prompt is um what is it it is veggie garden or scarecrow or you could do both so we'll look at that in a minute i just wanted to address that in especially in the facebook group um there's a lot of people who are finding it stressful and they had mentioned that they were quilters and they were used to a pattern and things being very precise um and so it was they were finding a bit stressful what i recommend is just focusing on the prompt for the two weeks and don't get too far ahead of yourself um, otherwise you'll start to get stressed and let you have a look at this while i'm talking stressed and confused um, about what's happening just go with the flow and let it happen it doesn't matter we don't know um, how our prompts are going to fit in either well i don't i fly by the seat of my pants so um and i find that a lot of fun now um i really do yeah i really do but i also wanted to give you an example so my perfect example of um letting letting loose is my mother so my mother um i'll just put this down for you to look at while i'm talking this is something that mum did um she started off at, with pottery then she did weaving and then she went into quilting and she was a quilter like many people have mentioned that they are where everything is precise and measurements and you have a pattern um, and when she moved away from quilting she moved into uh, embroidery and she did i probably i have examples of them somewhere but i think they're still packed in my boxes um she did ribbon embroidery um with kay pike who was a very well known um lady in australia and they're great friends and she had a great time with her and she she always um credits Kay for moving her out of the the quilting um and into the embroidery and um and then she started doing cruel work so and then um i don't think i have any examples of her cruel work oh wait i do have one here she did a the red and white this is a pillow that she made for me um so this is just the monotone cruel work that mum did and it's all very precise following patterns not making anything up herself um and she also did and mum i'm thinking i'm getting it in the right order from my memory um she also did monogramming i thought i pulled out a monogram of mum's here i have a few pieces of hers no not here but here's one this is one that mum did on Lulu's quilt so that mum I mean look how precise that is so mum does monogramming which is really precise and then she um she was also doing this type of embroidery she did this once this was like here linen I should cut that off and use it I mean very precise oh I should have pulled out Lulu's blanket I think I've showed you that before um that's what I could have pulled out it's in the cupboard somewhere um so she did embroidery but you can see it's all precise following patterns and um I mean, mum is an impeccable embroiderer. Oh, I haven't got my little cone either that she did. And then she went into bead embroidery as well. Um, and then also stump work. Let me just see if I can find Lulu's blanket. Just wait one second. Guys, the one cupboard I didn't look in um, <laughs> is where everything was. So let's go through it. So here's an example. It's, it needs an iron. Mum made us this beautiful pillow with monogramming. I just, my point is to show you how you can go from someone who's a very precise sewer to someone who is moving into creativity. Um, when, I mean, of course, all embroidery is creative, but um, I've got things here that mum started and never finished. 
uh, and she just she was going to throw them out, so I said, can't throw those out. One day, I mean, look at that bug, it's not finished, but so, so precise. Um, you know, that's something I started and didn't finish. Oh, here's some more of Mum's Cruel Embroidery. I mean, it's really beautiful. I should do something with them. I'm hoping I'll find this. Yes, oh, and my gosh, look at this one. And these are these are all from books or patterns um, that she did. That one. I love that. It's all crinkly because she uses Solvi and then... Um, I mean, isn't that beautiful? It needs an iron. Um... And then I, yes, okay. And then we come into, and then this is this. She made this for me one Christmas. Oh, and I absolutely love. It. I must pull that out and get it framed. And she's done that from someone's pattern, and that's a bit more stump work where you have the texture. And I think that was one of the last things that Mum moved into. Let me zoom in so you can see. Isn't it stunning? It's someone's pattern. I can't remember the name of the lady Mum that you used to do those from. It's really incredible. It's just beautiful. I'm going to get that framed. Um, and then Lulu's blanket. This is a good example of her um, stump work. Here. This is Lulu's blanket. I think I've showed you that before. I mean, it is a feast for your eyes. She's, I mean, it's all dimensional. I've got to stitch that back down. I think I've showed you years ago. I mean, Mum, that's a basket. I can't remember. I think Mum might have told me it took her a week. She wove it and, and then there's all it's all raised. It's incredible. I just can't even I can't even is what I say when I see this. But everything is raised and it's all the stitches that we know, but it's just um all dimensional. So that's that's Lulu's blanket that we just treasure. Um and then and then um I introduced mum to Jude Hill. Now Jude Hill, um, I think I probably discovered her maybe ten years ago. Um, and mum was over here visiting and we binged watched some of her free videos and um, we purchased her Whispering Hearts course and this this really changed um, everything for mum. So Jude Hill, she's also called Spirit Cloth um, and she's American and she does, uses a lot of her own hand dyed fabrics but she does um, really wonderful mindful slow stitching so she's the one that really introduced me to slow stitching so i want to show you what mum made when she was introduced to jude hill i had made mum one and sent it to her and then and then she went to town on them and she made lots of them so this was the whispering from the whispering hearts course um let me just zoom out so you can see and and this is where mum became deconstructed a de deconstructed sewer so she did a lot many years she did a lot of work in the style of jude hill um maybe even this one she gifted this to me i need to get this framed it's a christmas one absolutely love it but then she's combined some needle turn applique and she does all these wonderful things and mum's done a lot of courses with kath from the happen store which has also made her help her helped her be more dimensional but everything is deconstructed and mum just goes with the flow. I mean, these are all things that she's made for me that um, I haven't made up into anything. Um, so she's went from a precise sewer. I mean, she's still precise to a very creative um, deconstructed sewer. And that's the best way to describe it with millions of stitches. Here's a pillow that she's made me. Actually, I need to put a pillow slip in that. That would look nice on our couch. Um, oh, she made these for Lulu. And here she, this is where mum has now moved into combining her, her own style with all of the different techniques. So the very precise, look, that's raised wool embroidery. She's put felt under there. And then, you know, just some wool felt flowers that she's embellished and, and birds are very typically mum. And then a very precise little lady beetle there, but it's all combined, combined with the slow stitched background. Um, and I think there was another one, but I don't know where I put it. And then this, this is, I mean, this is, she's made tassels and put tassels on that. I love that. I don't know what I will do with it, but I'll make it into something one day. Um, and then that again is influenced by Jude Hill there. So just to give you an idea that you can break loose and, and just, you have to be true to yourself. Mum has always stayed true to herself. So I feel like she she has struggled um hasn't struggled you know 
to transition but she never looked back when she started the slow stitching about 10 years ago and if you i mean i don't have updated images of mum's piece but it is t a total combination of all the techniques that she's learned over a lifetime so um hopefully sarah will get the opportunity to take some more i think i've got a few but she's done more and it's really amazing i'm just like i just say mum you just make me want to stop you're so good but um it's all you know it's very her and and we can't imitate mum and even though we're her daughters so um yeah i just want to encourage people to give it a go and i think my, my main point is i don't it makes me sad to see people getting stressed um and and not enjoying the process because it's meant to be enjoyable um if you're not if i what i would recommend if you're not enjoying it apart from just focusing on the prompts is maybe um if if the you know the the flowing one piece is really stressful because you're worrying about your composition i mean there's no composition police out there well they're not they're not allowed they'll be booted out if they are if they do appear um you know it's really just for you it's a learning process it's a learning process for me i haven't done something so detailed in a continuous i've done something a bit more abstract in a continuous thing but not so detailed and i might not like everything that i do um i was unsure about my gate but i'm i don't mind it now i've seen other gates that i like more i always like other people's stuff more than my own so that's just normal that's just human for us to be like that but i, I do recommend that we don't we try not to um compare ourselves to others and and just stay in our lane and focus on that's my big thing stay in your lane and don't worry about what everybody else is doing um but if, yeah if you're finding it hard to do the flowing on maybe do um panels you could do panels for each prompt and then you could stitch it into a, a wall hanging quilt sort of thing um or you could do you could do a, a fabric book if you don't want to do a hardcover book you could do a fabric book and each prompt could be um a page or you might wait till the next prompt and say that prompt is not huge so maybe i'll add that to my previous page do you know what i mean you can just um make it up as you go like you don't have to um do the long flowing thing it's not obligatory that's what, what i'm trying to get to so if you're finding that stressful change your format um mum is doing a big wall hanging a bit like lulu's one um and she's she's just going all over the place and having things and it's looking amazing so and things are all different sizes like her flowers so there's some big her wild flowers are really big she's just been stitching them which so i don't have any photographs of those but they look amazing and then over here she's she's attached a cottage a vintage embroidered cottage and she didn't like the colors so she um has uh, embroidered over some of the bits that she didn't like the colors of um so it's really really a fun exercise um to stretch yourself but stay in it don't, don't go out too far out of your comfort zone if you're feeling stressed and walk away from it and then come back to it okay that's it that's me ranting like nice ranting not bad ranting but that's my rant and now i'm going to look at um i'm going to look at my veggie patch is that what it was or scarecrow if you can't if you don't want to have a veggie patch um you could stick a scarecrow in there in your wildflowers out in the fields um i want to have a veggie patch i'm wondering whether i might i'm just i've got my little basket of things that are put aside for this project and i'm going to stick with those i think um i'm thinking veggie patch so veggie patch might have more neutral do I want that over the I left that like that so I could have the choice of um of what I'm gonna do and uh, of you know whether I'm gonna put it under or over. That's what I'm trying to say. Um I do have this. This is interesting. Might this look it didn't print so well, but it doesn't matter. I might just let me grab my scissors. Um I might take a piece of that, put that in my veggie patch. Now, my veggie patch, I'm thinking, oh, no, maybe I won't use that. I'm changing my mind. Um, I could have green, but I guess you're going to have dirt in your veggie patch. But as I said, it's not really meant to be real. 
where I, I mean we're only pretending here it's just it's just a stitch project now that although I did use that there but that would have been a good one there that brownie bit but anyway it is what it is um, just rummaging through here this lovely painted piece I think, did I do that or did Lulu do that I do really like that I think I might put a piece of that there I'm wondering whether it will interfere with my embroidery in the veggie patch. I don't think so. I think I'm going to have that even go. No, I don't want it to go right across. It is a bit stiff because it was quite thick painting happening on there. I think I'm going to have it go over the top. Now, I'm going to have a little narrow garden path, but I'm not going to have a garden path all the way down my thing. I'm going to have it swing over here. I'm going to leave some space there for something else. Um, I could put that there or could I maybe switch it and put no so we'll put this one here I'm thinking I won't have it go right up there I'll put something else and that it might be an opportunity to have a bit, little bit of lace or something I have this lovely scrappy bit could put that there so there is quite a lot of auditioning that happens obviously so really I'm working on my background and figuring out how is my um, how am I going to fit my veggie patch in I'm very excited about this one I think there's a lot of scope for some fun now if you're looking for inspiration as we always say a great place to go is um, I think I'll have that I probably need a bit more green over there no, I'm gonna put it over because I can't fit it under because I stitched see I stitched that one down too far so I'm gonna have that go there I might even have it like that and I'm going to put something more greeny down there um what was I talking about oh dear I get into trouble because I I change I chip oh, I'm going to put that there there we go um oh I forgot I'm so sorry I really am sorry I do apologize I've lost my train of thought please don't get angry with me oh some lace I thought I was going to put some lace. Did I say that? Was that what I was going to say? I think so. Okay, I've sufficiently pulled out that mess. Let me see over here. Oh, we have some more of these. Oh, I wonder. Oh, maybe I'll have that one of, attach one of those down there. Or maybe have it. Oh, no, I'm going to, I'm going to attach that there. I'll cut it out better. I'm going to attach that there before I do my veggie garden. That's a good idea. Okay, we'll do that. So you see how things happen. Oh, those are little stitchy things that I've got. I don't know why I've got this basket here. Um, okay, don't need that one. I wanted um, one with some lace. I don't know if I kept myself one with lace. I'd like a little piece of lace. <laughs> Here's some lace. Oh, lots of butter. Oh, I haven't used any buttons. Anyway. I struggle with buttons. Does anybody else struggle with buttons? I do. I would like a little piece of lace. These are not pieces of lace. These are, oh, here's one. I've already used that one up there. I don't want to use that one. I will use it again, but I don't want it to be so close. Oh, wouldn't that have been a beautiful gate? That would have been a stunning gate. Oh, well didn't see that did I last time I think I was getting myself all stressed um, dropping things I do get into such a mess so what I'll do is I might just take a piece of this this is this is from the lady in Florence from some she told me some stately home that she went to but they're only Pete they were like the family things I don't know why they would sell them i'm going to put that there it's just like adds a little little bit of texture um and yes yeah, so she got them and they're, they're family heirlooms i honestly i i'm astounded i got some documents the other day and um i got some documents the other day and in one of the envelopes i might put that little piece there just to add a little pop of colour in one of the envelopes um, 
there were like there were a whole lot of photographs of the grandparents with their grandchildren. I'm like, I obviously someone in the family passed away, and the the whoever just didn't even um, care to keep them, which is really always I would be keeping them. Really amazing to me that there. And I'm thinking, have I got enough here? That over there. Um, to do my veggie. Yes, I do. Okay, so what I'll do now is pause the camera. Do I need any of this? Dropping things left, right, and center. No. No, I won't use that. Um, I'm going to pause the camera and invisible stitch that down. The new bits. I can't see where my pins are. Oh, here they are. Um, and then I'll come back and we will plan out what's going to happen. Oh, I know what I was going to say. A good source of inspiration, we tell you every single time, is Pinterest. Now, don't just be bog, bogged down and look up, for example, um, <clears throat> if we're doing, if you're doing a bird or something. Um, don't be bogged down and uh, just look up bird embroidery. Look up illustrations. Illustrations are great. Um, they're quite often, well, not always, but sometimes simple, sort of, you know, more simplified sort of drawings. So, um, you know, I'm not saying to go and copy. I'm just saying go and get some inspiration of what a, a veggie garden might look like. And there's lots of veggie garden inspiration because people do um, garden journals and things. So go and go and look on Pinterest for and you might have some books that have some inspiration as well. Um, and then and then make your plan as to what you want it to look like sort of thing so i'm going to pause the video and then i will okay, be so back. i'm back i've left um these bits flapping just in case when i come to to add more i might want to tuck it under i've got to be careful not to grow you know like i maybe have it all wonky but not to grow you know become wide like that that's something to bear in mind um, as I'm attaching things and I was going to attach that so let me just pin that I'm not going to stitch it now I'm going to cut a bit more of this off um, and then we'll talk about how I'm going to put my veggie patch in okay so I think I'm going to put that there and have it overlapping the gate a little bit so I'm just going to pin that I won't stitch that on now that's something I can do off camera that's just an extra addition but I really like that keep that for something else you know maybe a bit further on down the track right so I need my pen get the blue one um, now what I did was I just put this on my um, printer and did a photocopy of the part that interests me it's a really great way. I didn't obviously have the fabrics here, but it's a really great way. It's actual size um, to then work on top and figure out um, what you want to do. So um, I've got my pencil and I saw an illustration where a garden, there was like, it was bigger, it's a big illustration, but it had the garden divided into little boxes and then the little boxes divided into little boxes. So that's what I thought I would do on my garden. Um, and I thought I'd have my path coming over here, but I, I'm wondering, will I draw that? I'll just draw a little faint idea of it there. Okay. And then I was thinking I might have like a fork or a spade leaning up against the wall. And I might, you know, do little grassy bits sort of thing. So I'm going to have one patch here. Um, I'm probably not going to draw in my veggies. I'm going to come down over onto this one. This is a nice way you can, can, like by doing, and I'll have something coming along here, filling in that space there. But it's a nice, when you embroider over all of your different patchy bits, um, 
it's a nice way to combine um, all of the, the, the pieces. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's going to go like that. And then, where's my line? Over there. So I can actually make my other veggie patch bigger. I'm only going to do two. I'm trying to have it come down here. And I might make it a bit deeper than in my drawing. Tiny bit deeper. And I'm hoping you can see it because I'm doing it with the pen, the blue pen. For this one, I'm not going to divide up. This one, I'm then going to divide up into, I'll do this one first, four other patches. And I'll let you know now, I'm not going to do any embroidery now, but I will be pulling out my ribbon embroidery, my ribbon, silk ribbon embroidery threads as well. Okay, um, and then I'm going to have two here. It's not perfect, doesn't matter. So you'll notice I haven't put too many florals in my background. They're more abstract sort of fabrics. That's just me trying to keep it a little bit simple so I feel like I can fit in the things that need to go in. I have no idea. Um, I know what the, obviously what the next prompt is. I have no idea how I'm going to include it, but I will work it out. It'll come to me, so don't worry about it. I'm not stressed. I have no clue. I know, I know what it is. So you have no clue because you don't know what it is, but um, I'm just saying I'm just going to wing it and it will go in somehow. Okay, so that's my veggie patch. I'm going to do some um, cauliflower, um, some sort of turnipy sort of thing, not turnips. Um, I think they look a bit more like um, beetroot. Um, these sort of would look a bit like, I'm going to do them red and green, so they might be a bit more like rhubarb. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a bit. And this, I wanted to do the little crossy things and have maybe tomatoes growing on those. I'm going to have a strawberry patch here, onions and carrots. That's what I'm going to do. You could have lettuce, green cabbage, Cauli, you know, cauliflower, all kinds of things. I mean, the, the scope is endless. I'm only doing it small. I, I mean, you, I could have a whole lot of more veggie patch coming down the side if I wanted to. Um, but I'm only going to do a little bit because everything is very detailed. And um, I, um, you know, maybe adding more up there as well. So um, I just wanted to mention before I sign off... Um, that uh, Susanna Easdale from Vintage Blend Studio is also doing a monthly um, prompty sort of thing. Um, and I was just thinking about it while I was um, doing my invisible stitch. So it's long stitches at the back, tiny stitches at the front, so you can hardly see them. Um, and she, she, that her, she's doing more traditional um, techniques. So Possibly some of the ladies that are not enjoying doing the random slow stitching, you might enjoy Susanna's um, challenge. She is selling a PDF for all of her prompts, so you would get a, you would buy go over to her shop and buy her pattern to then participate in her. I can't remember if it's monthly or I think it's monthly or bi monthly. I think it's monthly. I'm sorry, Suzanne, I can't remember. I watched it in, in November, so I can't remember. But yeah, so I'll link her in the description box and um, maybe her... I mean, we're not doing this for monetary gain, so um, it's, you know, if you want to move over and do somebody else's because this doesn't suit you, that's perfectly fine with us. We want everybody to be happy. And it might just be that Susanna's is more structured and you might... Um, and you get a... P, you know, well, you don't get the PDF pattern. You have to buy it. But um, you can have the option of purchasing her PDF pattern. Um, and then you've got something more concrete to follow. So, um, yeah. So there you go. So I'm not... I was going to try and participate in Susanna's, but I just physically can't do it. So I did tell Susanna I just couldn't find the time to do that. But um, I did want to um, let you know that that is going on as well. Maybe you want to do both. 
who knows if you've got time you can do both if you don't maybe you prefer to have something more structured so i'm going to go now um we're going to do the i'll start the stitchery but i'll to get it going but i'll of course each bit will leave a part not done so that you can see what i'm doing um and um and i will see you again next week so thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye